I'm here with uh, Patrick Leishing and Rachel Armstrong. Uh, Patrick is the CTO for Toptica Photonics. Patrick does research on advanced laser systems for quantum optics, biophotonics, and non-destructive testing. Uh, one of his projects has received funding from the EIC um, pilots FET Open under, um, under Horizon 2020. And um, I'm also pleased to introduce Rachel, who is a professor uh, of experimental architecture at Newcastle University and coordinator of uh, EIC FET Open funded project Living Architecture. Rachel is working on new materials used in architecture. Um, Rachel, so you're working on new materials for buildings that live, grow and repair themselves. Can you tell us more about your project? Yes, um, what we're trying to do is to change the impact of buildings on the environment. And in order to do this, we're harnessing biotechnologies um, so that we can take the waste products of a home and turn that into a range of useful outputs. And we're doing this using um, bioprocessors and this is the first time really that we've had bioprocessors that use synthetic biology um, and that are integrated into sequences of different microbial populations and this in some ways can be thought of as an organic computer for processing waste within homes so the idea is that the impact of our buildings is not just to do with energy reduction, but actually the resource recycling that takes place within a domestic and even a commercial environment. Thank you, Rachel. So, um, Patrick, can you tell us more about your research? Okay, so Toptic is a company investing about 10 million euro in uh, research and development every year. And we are very keen to have the most advanced semiconductor laser systems for applications in quantum optics, biophotonics, and non-destructive testing. So especially one problem was very interesting to us. It is the quest for even better time measurement. Better time measurement means that you want to have a, a global positioning system which is accurate to a millimeter or so. Not some meters, but millimeters. It means you need even better clocks. And to build an even better clock, there was a fed open project called NuClock. And they asked us to develop or build, uh, investigate a new laser system at 167 nanometer. Um, there is no laser exist there, existent so far. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Rachel, what are the specific challenges uh, for high risk innovation? Uh, for us, the specific challenges for high risk is simply that people don't know what they're investing in. We don't have any examples that we can show as being demonstrators for both the technology and the experience in the home or in the um, uh, corporation for the placement of these um, wall-scale bioreactors. So what we're developing is something that's about the size of a very large bookcase. Um, and within that, gray water goes in and it's, and it's processed. Um, but to try and communicate why that's a really good idea to, um, let's say, building developers, property owners, homeowners, um, and um, you know, keep the conversation alive as to why, even at this very early stage of technology readiness level, um, that the, the vision of the changed impact of our homes and cities on the environment is one worth holding on to. So most of our activities to do with high risk has been to do with building an uptake community. And it's been quite a broad community, so we're not just dealing with those people that are going to take the technology to market, but we're building the communities of interest that maybe deal with interior design, that are connecting with the broader public, people that own homes, people that are interested in ideas about sustainability, people that um, want to see more integrated energy solutions within homes. So it's actually quite a broad interest community. Um, and the reason for doing that is because we won't make a one-step um, transition to a final product but what we're hoping is to make connections to many different pathways towards that ultimate goal on the way and that's why we need a broad interest community.
Thank you. Indeed, unlike uh, most of the uh, companies that are present here, um, that who, whose products are very close to the market, yours are already at an earlier stage of development. Uh, Patrick, why is it important to have um, public innovation funding at this early stage of development? Well, the question is, would you be a company who, which already owns a cash cow and can finance all the research like Google does? So most companies are not Google, they don't have the money to invest in research and if you have a significant project like Rachel's project, you need millions to go. So the EIC and especially the small and medium enterprise uh, um, instrument where you can get two or three million euro of up startup financing in a way, this is great to, uh, to bridge the gap until a venture capitalist finally would set in and finance you through the product phase. You were talking about um, having to build or um, building a community around uh, around your innovations, and uh, what we're trying to do with the European Innovation Council is also to launch an EIC community with all the investors, with the companies. Um, do you think this is a useful? Initiative. I actually think this is an essential um, step for us. I think that um, having international um, European partners is really important because obviously homes are not the same around the world and therefore the kinds of functions that we would be asked to provide um, will change from community to community. So that is one aspect, the, 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 the final range of homes that we can reach. But also, um, I think when you have a large ambitious vision which is consistent with, let's say, the grand challenges of the world, you know, how our buildings and cities can be less damaging to the environment, um, the vision itself changes the practice of many partners. So that, for example, the biotechnologists that we're working with are now looking at domestic and commercial environments for their products, whereas before they were more um, industrial based um, or they were based in um, uh, developing countries which didn't have the same infrastructures. So we can reach luxury end um, markets as well as um, the cheapest possible solutions. So essentially um, a vision that many people can participate in is transformational for many different partners. So whether they're universities, whether they're small or large businesses, um, new possibilities come out of this and um, there's an emergent quality to next steps that happen. As you work with different partners, you realize that they have different capabilities. So in our project, we realized that one partner had great capabilities in ceramics, which we didn't know before. Um, and so ceramics has been one of those pathways um, that's been opened up in terms of how microbes colonize um, different kinds of surfaces. Okay, thanks very much, Rachel. Thank you, Patrick. Thanks for talking to us. Okay, thank you. Thank